Hey, hello everybody and welcome to the Sound Tester Room, where today we're going to take a look at Fiddlewax Pro. Yes, uh, so if anyone remembers, I did the Fiddlewax Blue and a Fiddlewax Yellow, which I found incredibly good fun. This is brilliant. I love, the, this is great. I like the Fiddlewax apps and I like the ideas um, that the developer has, has put in. So you get basically with this, uh, two drum kits, two, two full drum kits here. We can change our drum kits. So standard drum kit, which is the acoustic kit with smaller amounts, and then we have the fuller kit with all the stuff, and then we have standard electronic kit, and full electronic, uh, small electronic kit, so it's easier to kind of play. We're going to stick with the full acoustic kit for a moment. And uh, <clears throat> we have um, five tracks now we have to play to, to record on, five multiple tracks, and we can multiple track on each particular track, and these loops are uh, auto expanding. I'll 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 explain what that means in a sec. Then we get a selection of instruments to use as well, but it's MIDI controllable, so you can set your channels to control other instruments, other synths that you've got. Okay, and it is audio bus and inter app audio uh, supported. So you're good to go with stuff like that. And also what I'll do as well, this is running iOS 8, so I'll take a big risk and uh, try and set it up with Audio Bus. I did I set it up, up with Audio Bus and Interap Audio earlier on, and it worked fine, but I'll do, it, I'll do it live. And if it messes up, I'll leave it in. But it's not the app, it's iOS 8, obviously. But it, uh, hopefully it will all work fine. So how does the kit sound? The kit sound brilliant. Another cool thing about this uh, trigger in here is that you don't have to actually hit the pads. Great for tom rolls and things. It has quantize and stuff like that. So here we have this. So there's the drum kit bit. Here we have our our, our our play control sort of thing. So at the moment we select the piano. So you see these chords here. Now we're in C major and we're in whole tone sort of thing. So you can choose from uh, tetratonic, uh, pet, uh, pentatonic, blues, augmented, mystic, whole and tritone. But we're sticking to whole tone at the moment and we're st we'll stay with C, but we can choose what we want. But we're in C major, whole tone. We're on 120 BPM, 4-4 four, four time signature, which we can change here, you see. And this here, is our effects are re it, they're global effects so it's like reverb on or reverb off filter on or filter off for the whole thing but doesn't really that's not really what this is all about you know what i mean it's this is about something different and better we have a metronome here which we'll just play which is cool and we have recording options here so you see it says audio we can record audio output only audio midi output midi output only uh need help with midi so there we go. And then we have record. So we hit record and we record our output sort of thing. So that's that's cool. But like I said, you know, I, I, I prefer doing this with um, audio bus and stuff. Now, here we have our recent recordings. So when we make recordings. Okay. And then we have information. So information is cool. So this explains what's going on. So that's your drum samples in that section there. There's your record loops, play, restart loops, stop loops, and then this. And then it, they're your instruments, and then you can enlarge the on-screen keyboard or mute the chords, and then you have your advanced settings. And so this will give you your chords. And then for the different layers, it's all notes chromatic, notes in key, diatonic, notes in scale, pentatonic, blues, and so on and so forth. And notes in the active chord, which is like a or auto harp, which is what it said. So for instance... So the chords... Let me just get to the chords as well. The chords are great. So for each section, so for instance, <clears throat> you'll see that my note is highlighted there on, on, on its C note, so I can play with this keyboard as well. If I change to B here, or let's say, yeah, well, let's say B, you'll see that my keyboard, where C is represented, has now been transposed to B. So this will be C now. So you're not you can transpose and just stay in the same on the same key sort of thing, but let's go back to C because it's easier. Makes more sense to me, right? So the chords are great. So if I hit this, I get an F chord, and I get a suspended fourth or a suspended second, and then a minor, and then 
playing an F9, 7, F6. And then here the sharp order flat, so F, F flat there, well, just B, e, or F sharp. And then, uh, like, it uh, works like the circle of fifths. And then there's all other information as well that you need to read about how this works. And so there's this here as well. So let's get down to, uh, to uh, recording. Let's, uh, re let's record some basic stuff. So let's just set our, <coughs> our metronome off here. And the cool thing is I can arm it to record, but it's not going to, <coughs> it's not going to record anything until I start, I start hitting it. And I, and I'm not limited to how many bars I record. So let's just start with a basic four on the floor bass drum pattern. So I've recorded C, two bars, and I can quantize that in, or I can start shuffling. You won't really hear it now, but you will when I start to add stuff to it. So let's, uh, let's add some other stuff now. So let's stay on the same pattern because we're going to use this for the drums. Cool beans, eh? Look. So let me just stop that a sec. So that now we can turn our metronome off. <clears throat> now you can see what's happened there, right? I've got my uh, little drum pattern recorded, but I've multi-tracked it because it's impossible for me to lean around the mic. Uh, the, the it's awkward for the camera. So otherwise, you could play it sort of like you know, like a, like pads and stuff like that. So anyway, what we got is this. So <clears throat> if I now hold record. It will take me back to my first. It takes off all my other overdubs and takes me back to my first thing. So if I've made some mistakes and stuff, it re like say for instance, I'll show you now. So we've gone back round. So I will say, oh, I'm not happy with the snare. Just hold the record, and then to get rid of it all, just do that. And it's done. So we better start off again. See, I'm altering the swing now. Let's stick with that. <clears throat> so we can take our metronome off. Let's move over to our next track now. So let's first of all pick some chords. So we're going to go. See, I like that. So we get it ready to arm it for us first. Thank you. 
taken off that little bass in the piano bit. And that's stop all and start all. So <clears throat> the point is here, it's, it's excellent for like composing songs, working on ideas, it's fast and it's friendly and it you don't need to stop anything to reset and of course the loops will just continue to expand. So for instance if I set now a um, like a sitar sound and I thought well I'm gonna just jam around a little bit now with, with a bit of sitar over that so I, I don't know why I would do that but there you go. So here we go let's just start it off and let's, let's start it off. Truly, I agree, it's awful, but there you go, that's me. <clears throat> now you can see here we have started with our eight, our two bars, our eight beats for drum pattern, and then 16, 16 for the next two parts, and then 32. And then <clears throat> I'm just going to, I could go on and on, you see what I'm saying? This is, this is the point that they auto-expand to whatever you're playing. So or, or shrink as well, if I was only to record like four, it would just be four. So here's, here's how that works. Now... I'm sure you want to hear some of the other sounds. So let's uh, have a look at the, f uh, excuse me, you know, the full electronic here, which is. I think you'll agree that they're really great. Now, I don't know if you could actually picture this, but you could build up some awesome, awesome drum drum pattern here using the five tracks and the mixture between the acoustic and the uh, electronic kit so that's really super cool um okay so there's that now the other sounds have we here we have uh, i think like a, a cello type thing or it could be a double bass depending now So, you know, you could, uh, if we just get rid of all that a sec and have another quick blast through, let's just record a bit of that. Strangely, I recorded 36. So the point here is actually the sounds, isn't it? I get carried away. So anyway, the next one is our air bass, our electric bass, our like. Um, our guitar so some uh, kind of a Brian May type feel uh, um, you know um, harmony guitar thing going on there so let's just uh, quickly start that so on and so forth. Then we have our our sitar 
And here we have a trombone. So you've got three ways to play, you know, which is cool. Now these sound great, these brass sound great with the chords. Saxophone. I love the fact And then we have an accordion With a nice phaser on it by the sound of it Miriam Bro Glockenspiel type thing Vibraphone a couple of synth sounds, you have a square wave. And a sawtooth. So right, anyway, so what I'm gonna do is quickly, very, very quickly now, see if we can set this up going in in, uh, in audio bus. So I'm first of all just gonna be record a, a, a bit of a bit of a pattern. again Okay, that'll do. So, let's turn that off. Now, let's <clears throat> let's go for it, shall we? Let's see. So, we'll have our output as a multi-track door works fine, I know. Cubase has had a few problems with the, the actual control bar being not visible. So, we'll see. I don't know. And we'll set our input as... Um, Let's find it now. Fiddlewax Pro. It's all sitting there quite nicely. Oh, there you go. So there's the. Uh, How does that work? Yeah. Let's pop back over here and let's go to Cubasis. <clears throat> yeah, there it is. Look, look. Look. <laughs> it worked. I'm very excited. It worked earlier. Um, right, so. I didn't have my thing earlier, but then I turned off the... Oh, yeah, that was it. I, I set it up all earlier, but there was nothing here. It was just... It was white. And I switched the iPad on and off, and it worked okay. So you might want to try... You might want to try that. All right, so let's set that up now. Let's try this. That's the routing. Audio bus. Okay. So let's set that up. Let's set that up to the monitor. Let's go back over here. So remember, this is iOS 8. All, all the moment seems to be working okay. So I'm going to set this off. Um, yeah. Just check. That's fine. So, good. I could play along now. Oh, organ. Okay. Oh. 
gosh, it's worked again. <clears throat> right, so. Brilliant. So anyway, guys, there you go. There's Fiddlewax Pro. There was a quick run through, so you can see you get some different sounds. Like I said, you can you can set it to um, control MIDI. I think I'm pretty sure it'll it'll send its signals out and stuff like that. So um, there you go. Yeah, Fiddlewax Pro. I enjoy this. It's good fun, and it's very very handy for composing drum patterns and then trying different chords and stuff with your your tracks you know and the fact that you can multi-track each of one of these gives you quite a big area and the fact that you're not sort of limited to once your loop is set you can get bigger and bigger and then of course you can just delete one part the last part you recorded sort of thing and you'll end up with your original track so all in all pretty pretty good all right guys hope you've enjoyed this um Remember to uh, subscribe to the channel if you like it or visit us at uh, soundtestroom.com. All right, guys, and I'll see you later.